that look and you know people have bad news to tell you? I guess they had to cut this trip short. Really, nigga? Man, if you don't get your camera... Bruh, get out of here, man. Shit. That's a spear in his chest. Get down, get down. Wait, wait. Oh my god. Who? My skin. Do not show that on the screen again, please. Is it what happened to her? Oh my god, that is disgusting. Are you ready? Welcome back to the channel. We are here once again. It's season one, episode two of Bates Motel. Now the first episode is probably one of the best opening episode that I've seen for a series in a long time. They take the cake, man. They they take the cake. This first episode, they just they went balls in for for, <laughs> for everything. Like in some cases, literally. You know what I'm saying? This is gonna be real interesting. I wonder if there's gonna be an investigation about this guy just turning up missing. We got Richard from Lost <laughs> as a police officer. And let's see how the dynamic between this mom and son goes because it's a very interesting relationship. I don't, I don't think, I don't think it's gonna get incestual, but I have this weird thing in the back of my mind thinking that it probably ends up being incestual because these two people, their relationship is so weird because the, the mom is like super like in a way obsessive with her son but at the same time it's based on stuff that has happened in her past not only with him but the it seems like the ex-husband we don't know who killed the ex-husband i i have a great feeling to think that she's the one that killed the ex-husband because she didn't give two shits about him at the beginning of the um last episode so i'm looking forward to find out more about that if she just has a history of killing people and that's why she keeps moving around you know what i mean but she wants to be settled here but she's still like super overprotective of her mom she has another son that admittedly very hate hates her and we don't know the backstory behind that but it has to be something it has to be something so i'm looking forward to it anyways guys thank you guys so much hopefully you hit that like button as always, if you want to see more episodes of Bates Motel, by the time you guys are seeing this on YouTube, I'm pretty sure that we are way further along in the series, maybe even finished with it on Patreon. So make sure you go check out the Patreon if you want to see full uncut reaction. And let's jump into the reaction and I will see you guys right after for the review. You know, and I remember where I know this kid from is from he's in the show. He's the star of this TV series, um, The Good Doctor. Why is he so obsessive about these weird ass images of it seems like somebody keeping somebody hostage? I think it's gonna be a murderous mother and son. Hey mom. Oh, he found her. Not gonna lie though, normal is kind of a MILF, you know what I'm saying? If you feel me, you feel me. As far as I'm concerned, I'll find him some money that he can get on his way. Your toast is done. Yeah, I know. I don't suppose you want some breakfast? Thanks, no. Why are you here? Because that's what normal people do, Norma. They go home. Although most normal mothers don't move their home out of state and try and hide it from their own son, we're out of cream. We? Hey, why'd you leave the party so early? Where did you go? You hook up with someone? <laughs> I'd like to lie to you and say yes. You want to actually study together for the history test? Can we not go to a party this time? Oh my god, that guy must be completely wasted. That's my dad's car. Okay, here we go. The hell, somebody burned him? I don't know, man. It's kind of sketchy. Somebody set a fire there, was trapped inside of it. 
Sheriff! There's something here you need to see. Interesting morning in White Pine Bay. Burnt up dude drives into a ditch in front of your new hotel. How oh, rude. You know, it's a really nice town you picked here, Norma. To uh, start a new life and all, Stop you know? Stop calling me Norma. And if you're gonna stay here, you're gonna pitch in. I ordered all new bed linens the ready to be picked up when I get you the car keys. Mrs. Bates! Hey, come here, please? What happened? This is, uh, this is Keith Summers' truck. He's stalling this place. He hasn't been at home in a couple of nights. Have you seen him? Why would he leave his truck here? Well, that's what we're wondering. <laughs> All right, so nobody knows what happened. It's like, you guys come here and... Uh, it's like, you guys arrive and a bunch of stuff that starts happening. What is going on in my town? <laughs> it's like, what is going on in my town, man? You know, it's a partner assignment, so I want you to figure out who you want to work with. Hey, want to do this with me? Yeah, okay. Good. You can meet tomorrow. You live at the motel, right? I'll come to your place. Oh, well, maybe we should ask. 11. It. I'll be there. Did he die? Seems like they're getting bad news. So, why are you here? I just felt bad about what happened to Bradley's dad. There. Yeah, I know. What? I just wanted to give her this. I'll give it to her. Who is this D bag cock blocker right here? Baby, you can throw my. I'll give you whatever I thought. You won't have to doubt. I don't remember how this song is. I think it's a genuine song, right? Oh, uh, whose song is this I get? What the hell are you looking at? <laughs> Isn't this genuine? Genuine song. My boss got in a bad accident today. Oh, it's his he boss. Real bad. Oh, he's in a coma. Okay. Right. <laughs> <laughs> he's a good man. Dude. In a town like this, where the hell do you get that kind of money? I wonder if his boss was into something. What were they doing? You selling drugs out here? I mean. <laughs> Listen, dumbass, this is not going to stand. I am trying to build a life here for me and Norman. You are not going to be screwing this up. I grew up in a house with you, remember? It was always what you were trying to do for Norman. He's a good son. Dylan, would you please put that on a plate? I'm sorry if I was a, a little annoyed with you after you drove my dad away by skanking around with Norman's father. Plus, it wasn't my fault. I was 17 years old and I met your father. I had no idea what I was doing and I fell in love. Oh, yeah? How'd that work out for you? I hate you. You have never had an ounce of kindness for me. Hard to get on the tea party with you and Norman. What are you talking about? What tea party? That is the normal arrangement between mothers and sons, not this crap. How'd you get all this money, Norma? How'd you buy a motel and a new car? We haven't had a dime in our life, okay? I've been worried about money since I was conscious. What's up with that, huh? Sam's insurance policy. He sold insurance and he was well covered. Yeah, I guess so. Good night, Norma. Stop calling me Norma. I am your mother. Hey, he kind of disrespectful. I mean, <laughs> even he is questioning the relationship. Remember I was saying in the intro, I was talking about how I feel like this relationship is is incestual in a way. Like it, it comes off as that. Like she's way too overprotective of him. And it's like, in a way she wants him for himself like as a lover because even the older son is questioning it so i guess i'm not the only one that's really looking at it in a weird way because she's like it's normal for mothers and sons to be that close um no <laughs> actually no <laughs> actually there's a there's there's a limit to it there's a limit to it because when he's trying to like break away those are good you know what I'm saying? She's still like... I got it. Gang, it's cool. Don't stop your swiffer in. Hi. I'm here to study with Norman. Oh, hey, Emma. This is my mom, uh, Emma. Oh, that's okay. That Why do you in. matter right now, nice Dylan? It's like, I'm yeah. Dylan. Where do you live, Emma? What's your last name? Decody. No, but I brought some Decody. Is that Italian? No, it isn't. <laughs> We're from the UK. Here, come sit down. Do you have that list? Have a seat. No, I haven't made it yet. So how long have you? Uh, how long have you lived here? Five years. My dad. Jesus, the third degree, much? He was 
sir. Yeah. And are you okay? Do I look okay? I'm walking friend. around with an oxygen tank. He takes it everywhere. <laughs> I have CF. Yeah. Well, I have heard of it, but I, I don't know what it is. Exactly, I don't know. And your lungs create a lot of this thick mucus, and it makes it really hard to breathe. Lungs. I'm on a list for a lung transplant, but comes with its own demons, and God knows if we'll ever get one in time. Well, I hope you do. What is your life expectancy, Emma? Maybe That's a bit much. 27. Why are you smiling? That was a lot of questions. A lot of invasive questions, too. Sheesh. Do you think that she has to take that thing out of her nose when they make out? <laughs> this fucking guy. Who, like... What's this? Oh, God. I don't care. <laughs> these pictures are amazing. Did you draw these? No. No, I found it when I didn't know what to do. Oh, with this. please. I, I've like... read a lot of manga. A lot steamier than this. A lot steamier, you say. Okay, you found a weird person just like you. Good. Bruh, she is. And I mean. <laughs> Norma is a MILF, man. But I don't like this relationship she has with her son, though. Oh, God. <laughs> and they, they know what they're doing in this series, bruh. Uh, she has a bruise there. Good evening, gentlemen. Sorry to be in a robe. You caught me getting ready for bed. The other morning when we were out here, you, you said you hadn't seen uh, Keith Summers. Well, we have an eyewitness who, who was driving by here. You said he saw him standing right here in your front lawn and that you and your son were talking to him. I didn't know that you had meant had I ever seen him. I thought you meant recently. Well, some people might think in the last week as being recently. Yeah, some people might. Okay, so you're admitting you did see him? No, no I, I'm, I'm not admitting anything. Did he make any, any threats to you? No. Why, well, if, if he had, I would have called the police. Because he, well, he wasn't too happy about you waltzing in and, and buying his property out of foreclosure. Hardly incriminates me in his disappearance. He disappeared? I, I don't remember bringing up a disappearance. No, but you're implying it. No, but... <laughs> did you find him? That's what I would have said. It was like, did you find him? Because all the information I have, so... Is that it? Actually, no, I'd, I'd like to take a look around if you don't mind. Actually, I do mind. I think you need a search warrant for something like that. Right? Based on something more than just some meaningless conversation out on my motel front lawn, right? That's very true. you just going to barge in you here? better work with me, okay? And we'll ask how you want on your bad side. Okay, I... All right. Okay. All right, Peter, or whatever your name is. <laughs> I'm the last person you want on your bad side. Okay, bro. Hey, you guys be safe today. Yeah? Looks a lot like her son, doesn't he? Slap the handcuffs on. <laughs> well, that is Romero. It's just his style, you know. He's a dog with a bone, so. Hey, would you let me buy you a cup of coffee? Maybe as a gesture of goodwill? Sure. Yeah? Yeah. I wanted to give him a new life. I wanted to give him hope. Sure, yeah. And that gets a little bit compromised when sheriff bulldog is standing on my porch he's making all kinds of accusations first of all i really don't think he was making accusations i do know i do think that you were inferring that oh, we're back to that again <laughs> okay he grew up with key summers they were boyhood pals my you shoulder know, so is killing me dude doing these reactions for so y'all you know this is it's very personal to him Hey, deputy, we're going to see you at the woodchuck tonight? Absolutely. Yeah, wouldn't miss it. Right this, this stupid <laughs> but very fun the local sort of festival. Actually, it is. You should come. Yeah. Okay. I would love to. Great. Um, I mean, I couldn't take you, you know, because of the whole key summer of it all. I mean, we could meet there. Right. What are you guys in high school? Man, would you stop with the innuendos? How does this look? For what? I'm meeting Deputy Shelby in town. I didn't want to have to tell you this. I didn't want you to worry. The police came by last night. Apparently, someone saw us talking to Keith Summers outside after I specifically told the police that we hadn't seen him. I think I dodged it for the moment, but I don't think it's over. Deputy seems to like us, so I'm, I'm going to go on a goodwill mission. I'm meeting him at a community event in town. Norman, please. I'm just doing what I need to do. Yeah, this woman, this, this is weird. Yeah, this is weird. Why are you doing this in front Lord of your son? Norman, I'm your mother. It's not like it's weird or anything. It's very weird. 
What, what do you mean? But let me tell you something because this is something that I struggle with myself. It's weird nonetheless. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's weird nonetheless. And the reason why I say I struggle with it is because um, in my family, right? I have an older sister that if I'm at her house, she's not afraid to just walk out in front of her sons and me and you know what I'm saying? In just her bra and panties, just walks, <laughs> just walks through. You get what I'm saying? She doesn't care. It's not that we have some strange attraction to it, to, to her or anything like that, but she just doesn't care. Regardless of how you look at it, it's still weird. The fact of the matter that she's saying that, I get it because you have some moms that are, you know what I'm saying? They're not afraid to be in bra and panties in front of their children, right? Um, some moms, you know what I'm saying? Like, you're just not afraid of doing it. Should you do it? I think the context matters. You get what I'm saying? I think the context matters. I'm already suspecting that this relationship is way too much. Look, look at him. <laughs> like, look at his face right now. This son is looking at this mom. This is, this is some, um, this is like, I, I would love to grab those hips kind of, kind of look. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Let's be real here. You don't have to do this, mom. Wait, wait, wait. I'm not doing anything. No, I don't want you to go. Honey, you're overreacting. I'll go with you. No. Yeah? <laughs> no. No, you're not going with me. You know it. It's fine, Norman. It doesn't mean anything. It's not like I'm actually interested in him. I don't want you to worry about this. I don't want you to worry about anything. That's why I'm doing this. This relationship is too, too, too weird, bruh. She is a baddie, though. I'm not gonna lie. For an older lady. Know what I mean? She's a MILF. But... <laughs> As I said, that relationship is just a little weird for me. This is Dylan Massey. His guy was telling you about. So, Dylan, you know how to use a gun? Yeah. What is Dylan getting into, man? Crap, we're out of beer. Jeez, he saves their number as the whore? Hi, Norma. Yeah, I met with the plumber and I got the quotes for the new toilets. Be careful. Norman might take you out, my guy. <laughs> Don't you ever... Oh, 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 oh. What do you think you're doing? You let that bitch run you like a puppet. She doesn't run me. She cares about me. You're just not perfect. She tries. You shut up, bitch! You don't get it, do you, Norman? She's ruined you. If you hate her so much, why the hell do you want to stay here? Because I've got nowhere else to go. But don't you come at me again or I will hurt you bad. Do you understand? He is super overprotective of her as well. My guy, you better watch your back. Because these two, they will... They will kill. Okay. Oh no, not the mallet. Not the meat beater. Don't do it, Norman. Norman, don't. Jesus. Come on, man. No. I told you not to do that. Thank God he saw him, though. She's not a whore. I had such high hopes when I came here to make a home for me and Norman. Things just keep happening, weird things. It's like this, but it's not like this. Nowhere is like this. Not all the way through. Have you noticed what these people do for a living? Organic pig farms. And yet, most of these people, somehow, they're all living in million-dollar homes. The town. It was built in the logging industry, but all that collapsed with the tree huggers. So I'm there's something there going are, on this town. There's different ways to produce an economy. And it's not always what it seems. So everybody knows what's going on. Is that what he's implying? But surely you can't allow illegal things, bad things to happen here. The people in this town, they deal with things in a different way. And what about the guy who was burned? It'll be dealt with. An eye for an eye. That's crazy. 
What on earth happened to you? Well, I just got into a fight. It's not a big deal. It absolutely is a big deal. This is awful. What happened? I didn't even know, Mom. We just don't get along. He's gonna have to leave. He can't come into our lives and disrupt them like this. He can't talk to us the way he does, and he can't hurt you. I will not stand for it. Maybe it'll be the best thing. Damn, I boy Norman. Yeah, you know I'm saying he tried though. Oh, hey, cool you came. And you said it was important. I'm gonna tell you a little story about real living things. Four girls from Shenyi, China, get told that if they come to America illegally and work as housemaids, they will get citizenship in seven years. They are forced to have sex with different men every day. One of them dies from an overdose. Let's dig a grave and then bury her by a shed in the trees. This is a pretty wild story. Wild, yes, and not over. So after they have been sampled, they are sold one by one into sex slavery. Look at this. That's Ladyface. My dad's shown it to me before it really exists. And? Someone did this to these girls, Norman. And we can prove it. We can find the spot and find the grave. This is all a little peculiar. <laughs> Aww. You can tell that she really likes him, though, but I think he's more into whatever her name is. <laughs> All right. This looks like his first kiss. You're leaving in the morning. How did Sam die, Norma? You know, it's funny. Cause I had to do a lot of research to find out where you guys had moved to. And I wound up talking to one of the insurance people and Sam had died and what a wonderful husband and father he was. And then I thought, wouldn't it be interesting if I told them what life with Sam was really like? You know, how you guys got along and all. Just keep the music down. You're right. That's it. See, it's real. Let's go. It's not a good idea for somebody like her to be hiking. <coughs> Crap. This is a big mountain. Where's that shed? <coughs> Plus, you're going up a mountain. You're okay. getting altitude, right. altitude where just not a good idea for her. It's cool up here. Do you feel like that up here, Norman? That you're connected to something so much larger than ourselves? What the hell is that? Holy crap. It's one of the pop fills. I've heard about them, but I've never actually seen one. What this is not a good place to, to be. Hey. This is not good. We need to run. Hey. You can't ask Emma to run, bro. This is not good, man. Y'all better Don't need to hide. Hide. Okay. I'm gonna tell her not to breathe. Oh, well, that's great. <laughs> I'm sorry, but if I ever find a pot field, I'm out in the forest. I am booking it. I'm not even staying here to find out what's going. I'm out. Okay. Hopefully, nothing happens to her, to Emma, man. But now they know what your car looks like. What's going on? Is this the dude that burned the other dude? Eye for an eye? Bruh, this town... Uh, I guess you just fit right in, Norma. Oh, this show is insane, man. This show is insane. It's insane, but it's so good. <laughs> it's insane, but it's so good, dude. My God, what a show, man. Yo, this is like, <laughs> bruh. I did not expect the show to be like this, right? I just didn't. I didn't expect it. This show is catching me off guard not only with how the show is being shot just in general right just in general how the show is is just 
the way how it's structured, the dialogue, the cinematography, the setting, the, the, the writing, everything about this show so far in these two episodes is just hands down great. It's just great. You know what I mean? And I can't even express how I really feel about the show because it's just like there's so many things that kind of come at you at once, but it's so good to watch. This is the kind of show you want to binge watch. You know what I'm saying? Because you always want to know what happens next. So in this episode, essentially, um, the cops find out that the dude that Norma, Norma killed, which, you know, raped her. Um, that she's like, oh, I don't want anybody to come around and ask questions or whatever. Well, they found this truck near your house. So now you're essentially a suspect because somebody saw you having an argument with them the morning before all this happened. So she denies it, of course. He wanted to come in the house. She told her, she told him, need to go get a warrant. But she got chummy with the other dude that was with it. It's like, um, so we find out some more information about the town that they're in. And this town is like, it's like they're just, they're just a town that actually takes care of their own, right? So there's a bunch of illegal stuff going on in this town that it seems like everybody knows about, but nobody really talks about. You get what I'm saying? Like people know about it and they, they, it seems like they, they, you know what I'm saying? Put out their own kind of justice, if you will. This is like, oh, and they just allow it to happen. The police, they just allow it to happen. Oh, somebody commits a crime. We don't put them in jail. We don't lock him up. We just burn him at the stake, if you will. Because once we find out who did it, so somebody essentially burned up old girl's father. Now he's in a coma. They figured out, it seems like that's what happened at the end of the episode. Dylan, another problem comes in as much as i don't want to like no it wasn't the best decision that she made but as much as i don't want to like her i like her <laughs> you know what i'm saying as much as i don't want to like her i like her you know what i'm saying you, there's always somebody there's always somebody you know what i'm saying there's always somebody some woman in whatever shows that i'm watching there's always one that i'm gravitated towards just like man you know what i'm saying she's you know what i mean <laughs> you know what i mean so it's just one of those things where you just get infatuated and have a crush on the show because you're like you're looking at this woman and you're like man she looks pretty good <laughs> you know what i mean you mean barring the murderous intents <laughs> you know um but i also want to talk about her relationship with normal with norman is very abnormal man norma and norman's relationship is very abnormal is not normal as i described earlier in the episode i told you guys that you know what i'm saying not so much the whole naked thing it's just the way how he looks at her and then he's like you know and then she's like what do you care i'm i'm your mother but the thing about it is that it's the way how he's looking at her you know what i'm saying it's the way how he's looking at her it's like you know what i'm saying i probably want some of that but you can't you can't have those thoughts you know what i mean and that's why i feel like this relationship is going to end up being inset they may not go all the way there but the innuendos are always going to be in the show in my in my opinion i don't know where they end up I don't know if she's going to get jealous that Emma is spending time with, with Norman now. And I don't know if this is Norman's first kiss, but maybe that will pull him away from this weird way he feels about his mom. And the thing about it is this, when that is the only presence in, in a, in a young boy's life, I can understand if that boy develops some sort of feelings as he gets older where his mom is being overprotective of him and he doesn't expose because she doesn't let him really go anywhere i think this is the first time she ever allowed him 
to spend time with these girls so it's like he snuck out the other day it's obviously that she's keeping him sheltered this entire time and that's not good for him as a young boy you know what i'm saying um so i think he's 17 right so this is really interesting um dylan is here in town now now he's learning the ropes he, he going over there's obviously um you know some really weird stuff going on in this town and i guess we're going to learn more about it i'm looking forward to it in any case when it comes on to norman right when it comes on to um this town i should say i'll give you guys some advice if you ever in a forest and you see a pot field if you see a pot field a marijuana field yeah mary jane whatever you want to call it run do not try to pick some or do something foolish and get yourself killed more than likely there's somebody always there watching more than likely they're close by so in any situation if you come up on a pot field one way or the other just try to get out of there as quickly as possible without being seen okay you don't want to lose your life over just stumbling over something okay um and and quite frankly you know it's up to you if you want to report it or whatever you know what i'm saying i would anonymously <laughs> report stuff like that i would anonymously report something like that i wouldn't even, as nowadays it doesn't even really matter anyways because pot is essentially not illegal anymore in in the states pretty much you know what i'm saying i think excessive amounts is still illegal but either way great stuff love it what a second episode great stuff again thank you guys so much for tuning in leave a like leave a comment catch you guys for the next one man peace